Firstly, let me offer a word of apology for being a few minutes late. As you can imagine, it's a rather busy day with the IFS uh, publishing their assessment of the confidence of spending UK yesterday. But notwithstanding the other commitments that uh, I had this afternoon and I have this evening, I was determined to be here because it represents in many ways, I think, the, some of the defining challenges that uh, working with Ed we're going to face as a party in the years ahead. I have to say, you, you were kindly uh, generous in describing me as experienced. I have to say, when I was canvassing for support in the Shadow Cabinet elections, I got a text back from one of my colleagues saying, Ed needs his old friends and old hands around him. I'll be voting for you. And so I texted back and I said, well, I'm definitely the first, and I fear that I'm rapidly becoming the second. Uh, so as an experienced old hand, it's particularly heartening to be here to talk to a number of young Fabians. The first time I joined the Fabians and actually went to a meeting was when I was a student in Edinburgh University. And the speaker was Alistair Donnelly, who was introduced to a meeting, the average age of which I would estimate as being either in the very late 60s or early 70s, was, and this evening we have a bright new young speaker, Alistair Donnelly. So that probably is proof positive that I'm rapidly moving from being a young gun to an old hand. But Ed made a big play in the leadership contest and then indeed in the speech that he gave in Manchester about the new generation and why I think this pamphlet is exciting as it begins to put flesh on those bones. What I'd like to do very briefly is to touch on some of the issues contained in uh, the key chapters, but actually to try and put that in a broader context of what I think are the challenges that we face as a party. And I would basically uh, identify four challenges that I think we have. Firstly, we need to show to the public that we get it. And that finds expression both in terms of politics and economics. Firstly, in terms of politics, we took a beating in May. And the quicker we reconcile ourselves to that reality, the more likely it is that we avoid its repetition. And one of the great lessons, I think, and there was a very good article recently in the Fabian Review on this, that we should draw from the failure of the Conservatives to come to terms with the scale of their defeat in 1997 was the fact that it took them a number of years to acknowledge quite how badly they had been beaten. And in that sense, I think, when Ed talked about the need for humility and the tone that we use as a political party, I think he's absolutely right. I think we need to demonstrate in how we conduct ourselves in the months and the years ahead that we recognise that actually we're to blame for the fact that the public lost faith and confidence in us, not the other way around. And if we communicate a sense of indignation and grievance that the public were wrong in throwing us out, it will actually make the task of rebuilding that connection and that trust with the public more difficult, not more easy. Secondly, on the economy, it is and will continue to remain the main battlefield of politics in the years ahead, partly because of the consequences of the global financial crisis, which we are all still living through, our view that this represented the greatest market failure in 60 years, the right view that this is somehow not really a market failure, but simply state failure, and that played itself out in how they positioned a lot of the language that they used yesterday in the comprehensive spending review statement. I think we do need to communicate with confidence and with robustness a clear sense that we took decisive action to deal with that global financial crisis that parties of the centre-left were better equipped to answer the call of the times in recognising that scale of market failure. But equally, to be clear that we have a responsibility to deal with the deficit while growing the economy. And that is going to be the very substance of debates around the political economy in the future, showing that we get it. And recognising that for Labour to be electorally successful, we need to be economically credible. And I think Alan did an outstanding job yesterday. Um, I thought he was outstanding on the radio this morning. Uh, my only slight divergence from our Shadow Chancellor was when he resisted the temptation to describe um, George Osborne as an ideologue at about quarter to eight this morning because it does seem to me one of the reasons that George Osborne came into politics was to shrink the state. But in all seriousness, I think Alan has made a very strong start in reclaiming that ground and setting out that there is an alternative and that there is a better way to deal with the challenges that we face as an economy. So if our first task is to show that we get it, the second task, which will be my responsibility along with many others in the Shadow Cabinet and the PLP and local Labour groups and party members and supporters across the country, is to be a strong and effective opposition. 
Some of the things that the Conservatives announced yesterday are simply wrong. And we should have the confidence to say not only are they left-right issues, they're right-wrong issues. The idea that they can envisage up to 100,000 people uh, potentially being vulnerable to homelessness in the environs of London and across the country because of their changes in housing benefit is something that we need to oppose and oppose robustly and, defensively, uh, and strongly rather than defensively. Secondly, we need to be clear that where there are areas of common ground, for example, on the main issue of welfare, we should have the confidence to accept that, but equally to fight very robustly and very strongly in those areas where they have simply got it wrong. And whether it is in relation to some of the anomalous uh, changes that they made, for example, in child benefit, or simply the balance of burden that they seek to impose, why is it right that they say they will take about two and a half billion pounds in a banking levy, but take significantly more than that, between three, three billion pounds alone, incidentally, from changes to child benefit and um, tax credits, significantly more than that when you wrap up what Britain's children and Britain's families will be paying. Why is it right to say you should hit Britain's families for more than twice the amount that you would uh, seek to secure from Britain's banks? There are fundamental errors that have informed not just their macroeconomic approach, but the fairness consequences of their policies, the IFS today confirming what we were arguing yesterday, which is if you look at the distributional impact of the CSR, once again it is clear that the CSR measures are deeply unfair in their impact and hit the poorest and the most vulnerable hardest. So our task is to show that we get it politically and economically, to show that we are fighting an effective opposition, but thirdly, and that's why this pamphlet in particular is so important, we must never be satisfied with simply being an effective opposition. We need to prove ourselves to be a genuine alternative. What does being a genuine alternative mean? We've thought a lot about it in the last few months. And the task of moving from opposition to government is a hard one. It involves amplifying people's sense of grievance, and there will be a lot of grievance that people feel towards this coalition in the years ahead. It involves securing credibility that you yourself are seen as an alternative government uh, in waiting. But it also involves becoming a repository for people's rational hopes about themselves, their families, and their communities. And in that sense, that is why the beginning of the work that this pamphlet represents is so important. Because ultimately, we need to recognize, as I say, that we lost the election badly, and that we need to be working hard to answer the questions compellingly that the public are going to be asking of all parties in three or four years' time. And that's why the battle of ideas is absolutely fundamental to the electoral prospects of the Liberal Party in coming back against the coalition. So I think we need to show that we get economically and politically, we need to show that we're an effective opposition, but we also need to show that we can be a genuine alternative. The final point which bears on the first chapter of this pamphlet is also I think we need to change the way that we do politics. Because we need to be honest with ourselves, one of the reasons that we lost power and lost trust, the trust that the British people had previously invested in us, was not simply issues related to policy, but also a general and in that sense, I think that there are genuine opportunities for us to rethink our party organisation and how we campaign. And while I find some of the ideas that Jessica has put um, in here in terms of how we change our party structures compelling and interesting, if I'm honest, I think there are two related issues that we need to be grappling with. One is how do we strengthen our internal democracy and make sure that people feel participating in things like the National Policy Forum is an authentic expression of their own values that has genuine agency on what as a party we do and the perspectives that we offer. And there's a separate but related conversation about how we can the the machine. And we're asking ourselves really searching questions when we ask that question because we are seeking to buck the trend of most mass membership parties across Western democracies, which has seen falling levels of membership and falling levels of, levels of participation. But if we believe the Labour Party is actually about both serving a cause, the cause of social justice and fairness, but also serving a community, being rooted in and reflecting the aspirations of the communities we represent, then I do think we can't restrain ourselves to having an important and timely conversation about the structures of our party, but actually turn outwards and say, how do we take some of the most exciting innovations, not just from presidential campaigns like Obama's, but actually our own leadership campaigns, and say, how do we use tools like community organisation to make sure that we are growing a generation of people who have those skills and attributes. So the policy challenges are real, but so too is the challenge of how we do politics. The final point really takes me back to where I began. 
I want to acknowledge sincerely and genuinely the work that the Fabians have done over many years in taking forward the battle of ideas. But actually, to quote or misquote Kennedy, the torch is being passed to a new generation of thinkers. And in that sense, please don't underestimate the scale of contribution that as thinkers, activists, participants, and members of this shared endeavor, you can make to our collective future. Because actually, not only is it important that we are tapping the ideas of every part of society, but actually I think we need the motivation, the inspiration, and the insight of younger people in particular. They were one of the groups I think that we, despite continuing to secure some electoral support from, in other ways lost touch with over recent years. And actually there are very few benefits to opposition, I promise you there are very few. One of them I think is to be able to rethink and re-engage with a whole cross-section of opinion in society. So I think it's a timely and important pamphlet, but I personally, when I read it, thought these are just the first steps in a longer journey. And actually it's a journey that's not going to be completed tonight or this month, even this year. It's actually a journey which needs to culminate in being in a position to translate these ideas back into the practical changes that we want to see in our communities and in our country. For that, I'm incredibly grateful as a start. I'm interested to hear the other presentations that we'll hear on issues like working family and issues like party organisation and livelihoods and security. It's the start of a conversation. I hope we're able to develop that conversation this evening. Thank you very much indeed.